This break is brought to you by Netflix. Head on over to netflix.com slash GameBreakerTV to sign up for a free 30-day trial. Guys, if you're looking to work for a company like Irrational Games, you better polish up your Metacritic scores. Here's me to talk about a little strange uh, resume booster is Game Breaker writer Jason Winner. Now, Jason, uh, what's this all about? Because this is a very strange story to hear. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And there was apparently a, a posting on the Gama Sutra job boards for design manager for Rational Games. And it supposedly listed that the person, uh, as a requirement, had to have worked on a game with an 85 or higher score on Metacritic. Now, it's been removed from the posting if it was there before, but enough people are reporting on this that leads me to think that it actually was there at some point. You know, we've heard of financial incentives for companies to hit a certain review score, and, and that, that makes a little bit of sense because then, you know, if it hits a good review, there's going to be more people to likely buy it, and, and obviously the company's going to make more money. But does this make sense to, to try and hire your people around previous scores that their games have gotten? As a very, very base guideline, maybe. I mean, you want people who worked on good games. Obviously, games are well-received, like you said, made their companies money, but... Yeah, you know, there are better ways to go about it, like, you know, actually doing research yourself. If I list on my resume that I did game A, B, and C, you know, go ahead and do some research on what those did instead of just looking at the Metacritic score. And, they don't want to do... You really, I, I, employer, well, I employers want everything at their fingertips. If someone else is going to supply a Metacritic score that, hey, I got a 95, and you're like, hey, I got a 100, but you've got to go look it up, every time they're going to go with the person who makes it readily available on the, on their resume. Oh, of course, of course. <clears throat> I want to work for that company. <laughs> <laughs> but even if you did really want to tie it into that, if you have some sort of guidelines that you want someone to have had an 85 or whatever, don't announce it publicly. Go ahead and have it sitting you know, in your mind as the HR guy or the, the, the boss man, CEO, whatever. But don't announce it on your site. Go ahead and figure that out yourself. Or, or maybe even, instead of that, look at sales info. <laughs> Yeah, how much you actually sold of the game. That seems like it's a, it's, a, it's a small statistic that's definitely probably saved for during the interview um, of you know maybe what games they had been on and, and Metacritic. That way, it's not as as crazy as being out there on the actual application itself. Right. Um, I don't know, Jason. So what? So when you start your company, what criteria are, are you gonna have for, for getting uh, high scores? High scores. Definitely high, sc high score. If we're gonna work on like Space Invaders 2020. You better be able to hit like at least a million points or whatever on space. And jobs business. out there actually exist. There's there's some jobs for IGN where they were looking for walkthrough players, and they specifically wanted people who could get the high scores at all the best games. So those jobs exist. Uh, Maybe that's Sir all Jason. there is. Maybe that's it. the entirety of the hiring process. Is you just fly in your five candidates or whatever, you have them go head to head, and there you go. It's very possible. It's very possible. All right. Well. <laughs> I, I don't know how we can keep developing, but if we hear any more uh, crazy outlandish um, job requirements, uh, application requirements, not really sure. But we'll keep you updated right here on Game Breaker TV. Thanks, guys, for watching. Jason, thanks so much for the information and the news. We'll catch you guys next time.